Hey, and welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for coming back, everybody. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And it's time to drink the stouts. It's winter. Yeah. And I need stouts in the winter. And we know how all you <laughs> kids love, like, Imperial Stouts. <laughs> and you drink Imperial Stouts. <laughs> <laughs> but we got a couple, like, uh, pretty easy to get Imperial Stouts. They're not Dark Lords and the Black Tuesdays. And, like, right. You know, there are other Imperial Stouts. That are tasty. Yeah. Uh, and so we have the North Coast Old Rasputin. I cannot believe we haven't drank this. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a, it's an old favorite of ours, uh, especially the the face behind the camera loves this beer. A little shout out to Maeve. Shout out! Uh, she's gotten in trouble with this beer a couple times, so oh, yeah. I, she's, she's a little shy getting back to it. But, old uh, old Razzy. <laughs> <laughs> but we've done the 12th anniversary. I think that was with uh, Sean B2P. Shout out! out! Uh, like, year, like in the episode 60s, more like. Episode 60s. Somewhere around there, 64, <laughs> I don't know. And then we also have, uh, from Lining Kugels, their Big Eddie Russian Imperial Stout. Uh, we have a couple different vintages of this beer, so we can see how it's aging. Mm-hmm. I think the um, 2011 and 2012, right? I know it's 11, the other one's not marked, so. Okay. I well, think it's 12. We'll see. Uh, but this is part of their 10th and Blake um, series, their offshoot, the kind of like their craftier stuff over there mm-hmm. at the at Miller Coors, and Craft, I've, craftier, craftier. <laughs> now that the Brewers Association has told us what's craft and crafty, um, yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't know about you, yourself. I've had this beer in the past and yeah. quite enjoyed it. So, mm-hmm. and they also make the barrel aged versions, which. Mm. Okay, and these I had are... those two. I think I prefer the non barrel aged to the the actual barrel aged. So. Um, we're, we're gonna go with that. Sometimes don't mess with stuff that's good. <laughs> so do we go with the old friend, or should we do the the two years first? Let's do the old Razzie, and then we'll get into the two year vertical thing. Okay, cool. So here we go, North Coast. Uh, well, that poured out like you got a pretty big head in yours. It foamed up, but it went away quickly. Yeah, you can arouse that thing back up. It's nice and fluffy. Coats the glass real fluffer. nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a little fluffer. You got to fluff it up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, dark as night, this beer. I think this bottle might have a little age on it because I know we stocked up on the old Razzie and don't always want it. He He's too good to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it smells like it's got some age on it. Some of the Some of the intense character is kind of subdued and mellowed out a little bit. Yeah. So you get kind of like a soft malt character as opposed to like nice, bitter... Uh, Roasty, toasty. Yeah, and like astringent, hoppy, mm-hmm. that type of thing. We're pretty familiar with this beer, so I think we can talk about it and compare it oh, to yeah. what it should be. Absolutely, then, um... of course. Well, here we go. Cheers. Okay. Oh, man. I think that's definitely got some age on it, and man... I think it, it even benefited from that age. Mm-hmm. Very soft malt uh, backbone with some like vanilla and caramel. Yeah. I was yeah I was worried a little bit about the aroma because it it didn't smell as great as I remember. But then the taste is really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's light. It comes in at what nine and a half percent. Something around there. So. But like the the body of this beer is. So much lighter than you would expect from a Russian Imperial Stout, especially at, at uh, something uh, just any beer that big. Uh, it's just got a nice, clean, drinkable feel to it, and maybe that's why people get in trouble with this beer. Yeah, you just uh, I'll take a dark beer or I'll mm-hmm. take a stout, and, and you have this one, and it's it's big enough to be dangerous. It's and it's it goes down so smooth and. It does, especially if you're out um, at a bar. A lot of times they'll pour this beer on nitro, and it just kind of like rounds out even some of that roast character or some of the hoppiness to it and makes it even more creamy and, and uh, palatable and delicious. And it's, man, if you can ever have the chance to try it on nitro, please do that. <laughs> do yourself a favor. Right. Didn't we, 
didn't they say it's supposed to be a nitro? Uh, I thought when we talked with them, didn't they say their this beer was supposed to be a nitro or it's made to be a nitro? I think it is, yeah. yeah. And a lot of people don't do it on nitro just because you know you don't have the setup for that. But yeah, I remember we went to um, we went to a, a beer dinner, a North Coast beer dinner at the Publican, mm. and it was a truffle and beer dinner. So it was like totally amazing. And, <laughs> um, I remember Michael from the public sh- shut up. Uh, having to, you know, switch over one of their faucets and put the nitro faucet on because I don't think they normally have a, a nitro now faucet. Now they there. now they do permanently. So. They do it permanently. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I remember like you know a couple hours before the event, he's sitting there like <laughs> hooking up his uh, his his nitro faucet just so we, we could serve this beer properly. Mm-hmm. But it's tasting good. I don't think uh, you'd want to age it more than whatever I've done here. I don't think it's gonna. Yeah, I'd say probably a year, two years at, at the most. Yeah, and you're good. Like it's a good beer. It's it's made to be drank right away, as we know. Pete said, and I know there's a recent interview with the, I think New Belgian people. Like, these beers are made to be drank. Like, mm-hmm. We're not we're not telling you to sell them. And I just happen to because I don't want to pass out every night <laughs> <laughs> drunkenly. <laughs> I mean, there. I mean, you have to. You can't make beer to be cellared. I mean, it's just it's bad business model. Number one, you want people to drink beer more often. Right. Um, so they drink more, but, they buy more. So. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can't put a product out and be like, yeah, sit on this for two years because it'll be better. Like, no, you want it, it should taste good when you get it. Yeah. Um, do some beers benefit from age? Sure, but it's all that's all subjective. That's fine. And this so. beer is, I think, at a price point where you could. It comes in what four? Is it four packs or six? Four packs. packs. Mm-hmm. So. That's for you can drink two, three of them, and just stick one behind all your other bottles. And yeah, that's kind of what the um, nice thing uh, with with some of those beers. And for instance, uh, Ray Vert from Green Flash is is one that I'm interested to see how it ages. It does have like uh, it's a Belgian pale ale with Britannomyces, and it's absolutely delicious. But you know, I'm curious, so right. <laughs> I drank two and put two down, and we'll yeah. see. You gotta hide it back there because. Yeah, this beer and Rambert is delicious, and you just like, I know. I I'll just saw that. it today. I was going through the cellar looking for Christmas presents, why and I was like, here? "Oh, I'll have one of the." I'm like, oh, "No, I'll just go buy some more." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this this is great beer, and I know a lot of people have this because it's West Coast beer. So, and we're getting all the way out here, so it's pretty mm-hmm. accessible. And all of North Coast beers are great. The Pilsner they do is Scrimshaw Pils is awesome. One of our favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a, a number of bars out this way that, luckily, you can you can find it on draft sometimes, and that's that's always a good night. Yeah, nice mellow drunk <laughs> as opposed to kick yourself in the face drunk. <laughs> so it's a kick yourself in the face kind of night. Mm-hmm. So. Cheers. We'll sip on these and. Move over Time to for Big game. Eddie. Old Razzy. He treats us right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a good good time with our old friend, Old Razzy. Yeah. It's time to say hello to Big Eddie. Big Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we've got the 2010 here, 2011 here. Oh, so we're going to... You think it's 10? Not... I believe 12? so, because okay, this, so. this one is labeled actually 2011, and this one is just not. So you would assume if they started labeling vintages right. that they would continue to do that. Yeah, and I feel like we got the, or uh, they sent these to us over the summer. Okay. So maybe the new Big Eddie wasn't out yet. So gotcha. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Regardless. So full, full disclosure, they sent us these beers. <laughs> We, sh- we probably should be able to figure out whether they're which one's like this aged, is yeah. fresh or whether it's two years old. Right. And this one, the eleven has Big Eddie on the cap, and that yeah, they've also they've so. changed it. So you think as as the the beer gets more popular, they they're not gonna make a Big Eddie cap and then go back to a, just a plain gold cap. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we wanna <laughs> we got those caps. Don't use them. <laughs> Don't use them. All right, well let's uh, let's do it and, and see. So what do we want to pour both out? One, one let's each. Let's pour them or... both. And yeah. Then, okay. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So you poured the 2010. You got 10. I got 11. Very similar looking. As 
They than should you be. Expect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look exactly the same. This one's green, and that one's <laughs> red. <laughs> yeah, very um, deep color in the in the head, uh, almost like caramel. Yeah. So, got to be a high percentage of roasted malts in this beer. Smell pretty nice. Smells nice. Uh, definitely uh, booze, the alcohol. You can smell that. Nice soft malt character. A little bit of, like, a tiny bit of vanilla. Mm -hmm. Not overwhelmingly roasty, actually. But there's almost uh, like a a tartness. Nine and a half percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, cheers. cheers. Let's see. Yeah, nice okay. roast character on mine. Uh, a little bit of acid. Um, almost like a graham cracker type of malt character, too. Hmm. This one's uh, pretty sweet. Let's go. Um, roasty sweet. Yeah. yeah, this one has a, a little less, less of that acid character yeah. than the older one does. This one feels a little maltier mm -hmm. too, than, than the fresher <clears throat> one. Yeah, so I would say probably, um, I think I would tend to drink this beer fresh. Uh, just because uh, so, sometimes that acid character is a little weird in stouts. Mm -hmm. um, this is still, still a good beer. But I wouldn't hold on to it for an extended period of time. All right, even even though they are putting the years on them, um, and it's fun to see how it's changing, but right, you want to, another one you want to drink fresh. I would think so, yeah. yeah. And it goes really, really well oh, with cookies. Anyway, we got some cookies here. <laughs> <laughs> what stout doesn't go good with cookies? Mm -hmm. um. So the idea with, I mean, it's a perfect, perfect pairing. You got some chocolate in there, so you're obviously going to get some chocolate character out of a stout like this. These can also be, you know, have a higher bitterness from either the hops or that roasted barley. And put a little sweetness on there. It just kind of like counterbalances it. Makes it yeah. all tidy the, up in a bow in a nice little package. Yeah, but these aren't very hop. They don't have that hop forward or hop bite at all. Mm -hmm. They're uh, multi sweet, caramel. No. Uh, I guess a, more of a typical nice stout. Mm hmm. I think this is one of the less Americanized. Yeah, <laughs> I think this is one of the better beers from Line of Kugels. Um, we don't really drink that many Line of Kugels these days, uh, just because there's so many other beers to have. So we're always mm -hmm. reaching for new things, and a lot of the places we go to don't have Line of Kugels on. But I think this is a great stout from them. Yeah, and there, th this is now a series. I think the Imperial Stout. Uh, if, I could be mistaken, but it was the original of the Big Eddie series, but now they've kind of branched off and they make an Imperial IPA, they make a Scotch Ale, they make a uh, Baltic Porter. Right. So you can check out kind of the stuff that they're experimenting with over at Line Cools. Right, so it became like a, a line or experiment, like a umbrella to do these different things under. Right, maybe. right. Because everyone knows them for their summer, summer shanty and... Uh, what's Honey Vice yeah. and Berry Vice. You should drink a lot of uh, Liney Red back in college. Okay. Going to the brew and view. <laughs> well, that was, uh, you didn't have many choices. Was that like eight years ago? Nine years? And well, fuck so. you, Brad. <laughs> Old man. <laughs> He's 30 and all. <laughs> Outing me on camera and shit. <laughs> right there, man. <laughs> but yeah, pretty enjoyable beer. Um... If you're one of those people that kind of sees the Line and Kugel label and just kind of dismisses it, I would recommend just trying these beers out from the Big Getty series. You might be pleasantly surprised that they are they're doing some some pretty innovative stuff and making some good beers over there. So and they're pretty available too. Yeah, like you can get them in four packs, so they're not yep not hard to find. So yeah, just give them a taste. Like it's gonna hurt you. Just beer. <laughs> <laughs> So you end up in a gutter the next day. Yeah, a couple of good stouts. Drink or uh, eat some good cookies. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go to bed. All right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.